And Roger said no couch potato. <laughs> this intense expression. They use her eyes to control Turn the around. flock. This dog was looking at you. You'd go right where it wanted you to go. Very athletic. Very, very intelligent. Was at the top of the list for intelligent dogs in a book, a study done a few years ago. The Bouvier de Flandre was originally a cattle herder and a powerful draft dog on the northern hills of Belgium and France. He is known to many as the milk cart dog, which describes one of his historical chores. Around World War I, the type we know was refined and established. There are very few clues for the historian here who really don't know what went into this breed. We can speculate and assume sheepdog and mastiff elements, but that would be speculation, nothing more. In Belgium, standards for championship in this breed are high, including tests as a police, war, or defense dog. This is Bouvier de Flandre number 17. Is there a special way they have to trim them? Because if there was some, you know, deformity or whatever underneath there, they could they could carve, they could hide that by the way they carved them. Well, you could hide it for a little while, but a judge is going to find anything under there. Those trained hands. There's the owners. Doug and Michael Ann Johnson from Colorado Springs. Here's stage. This is Madison Square Garden, the world famous arena in New York City, and we're right in about the middle of the road to glory, so to speak, as we go towards best in show here at Westminster. I think once you say Westminster, you really said it all. Everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. We have an our story talk Westman. She called the garden, we call it the York. We know what you're talking about. We're going. The Briard is a French breed used for many years as a shepherd. In both the north and south of France, they have been used to guard small farms, to herd both sheep and cattle, and to serve as a general utility dog whenever and however needed. During World War I, the Briard had a distinguished career using special backpacks and harnesses to carry ammunition, <laughs> medical supplies, and small arms to the front. This is a tough, very intelligent, or somewhat stubborn dog that does best with an assertive and equally intelligent master or mistress. This is Briard, number 18. Love that name. Deja vu in like Flynn. <laughs> The four-time winner, the breed, four-time breed winner here at Westminster. There are the owners, the co-owners. Big crowd on hand, all getting excited. And I keep telling you, best in show, that's the road to glory. We're going to be right back with more right after this. USA Network. This little girl is 16 days old, but she has actually been getting pedigree puppy for more than nine weeks already. Dr. Fran Smith, veterinarian and tough breeder. That's because their mother was fed pedigree puppy throughout her entire pregnancy. Once the puppies are done weaning, they start on their own pedigree puppy system. It has all five building blocks of good nutrition. I wouldn't feed my puppies anything except pedigree puppy food. Develop with the vets at the Walsham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. If you can't enjoy regular milk because it does a number on your stomach the way it does to millions of other people, try lactate milk. Lactate is real milk, farm fresh and delicious, specially made so you can digest it easily and naturally. So go on, enjoy real milk again, and all those other things you've been missing with lactate milk. If you love the excitement of the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, here's your chance to relive every moment of drama from this year's show. From the group competitions to the awarding of the prestigious Best in Show, it's all here on the 1998 Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show home video. It's available only through this TV offer and all for only $29.95 plus shipping and handling. See what makes the Super Bowl of Dog Shows so special. To order, call 1-888-550-DOGS. That's 1-888-550-DOGS. Pretty good idea, pretty good stocky stuffer, so to speak. We're with the herding group, and there's the the new breed, let's call it that. The Canaan dog. Started competing 
in August of 1997. There's Don Jones, who recently retired as the student personnel dean at Emory University in Atlanta. Been involved with dogs for 40 years. One of the nice gentlemen in the sport. The Canyon Dog, Israel's only native dog, was recognized by the AKC in 1997 when it was over 3,000 years old. A herding dog and camp guard for the ancient Hebrews and Bedouin, it became dispersed and lived in the desert as a feral dog. In 1935, the breed was re-domesticated. A fine companion animal, it is a breed to watch. This is Canaan Dog, number five. You can see this dog is an all-natural dog, Joe. What you see is what you get, and they're very athletic, hardy animals. Been around for thousands of years, but just recently found their way to AKC recognition. That's really hard to believe. Well, it takes a while sometimes because uh, you have to put together a group of people that want to make it happen. The Canaan's and some of the people have been working on it for 30 years. Hmm. He's happy to be here. Nice young dog, Max. The first there are two varieties of collie, and except for coat, one standard rules both. The varieties are the rough and the smooth. The collie is Scotland sheep herder and has been seen here in America since colonial days. Their popularity here as companion animals dates back to the 1880s. These dogs take easily to training. They're intelligent and loyal, as well as very serious workers. This is Rough Collie, 20, number 22. Phyllis, the breeder owner handler, Nancy McDonald, who is so into this breed that she's also the publisher of Collie Expressions, a magazine exclusively for and about collies and collie people. That's Lassie. What's who that is? America looks at the dog and sees Lassie. You're right. This is, but it's and this Phyllis. is the other variety. This is Smooth Collie, number 33. It's the Smooth Collie. Short, this is my new friend. Collie. This one. This is the one. Diane Wagner. I visited with her. She wouldn't watch. She's probably hiding right now. <laughs> and she said she bought the uh, this dog when three and a half years old, but has really bonded with the handler, Colette. Yeah, Colette's from a dog show family. She's got good genes. Two older brothers are both professional handlers. All three were top junior handlers coming up in the sport. We saw Clint earlier in the hound group with the PDGV. I had to laugh when she, I said she had all these dogs, and she said we converted the garage. I said, what do you do the cars? They're outside. <laughs> Happens to a lot of us. The German Shepherd dog, one of the most familiar dogs in the world, was for many years Germany's most important canine farmhand. It was imported into England, where it is known as the Alsatian, around the time of the First World War. It arrived here in the United States at the same time. This breed is characteristically courageous, intelligent, and lends itself to almost any work, from bomb detection to babysitting. It is a rugged breed, fiercely loyal to its family and her. This is German Shepherd Dog, number six. Now, David's on a the roll. There you see the owners. But... This is David's pick, and he has really been hot. Hey, I talked to Carmen Battaglia, who judged the breed in German Shepherds. He says this dog has a great male characteristics and wonderful side movement. It's a beautiful dog. Going to go with Jimmy Moses. Jimmy Moses handled some of the top show dogs in history, the German Shepherds, especially Altana's Mystique. The word old in the name of old English sheepdog is not accurate. The breed is probably less than 200 he's years for old. His eyes is what he he's was doing a basic now. sheep dog originally, but was later used as a I'm, drover. And you can't tell me that dog can see, David. His coat Come on. Is resistant to both weather and brambles. He has been called the bobtail because some specimens are born without tails. Others have their tails docked close to the body. This breed has grown in popularity over the years, in part because of his jolly good looks, in no small part because of his jolly nature. This is Old English Sheepdog, number eight. They see right through that stuff, Joe. Right through it. They're far-sighted. They gotta be. They see right through it. That's Yoshi with owner-handler Jerry Martyr. <laughs> Jerry's won this group before with an Old English Sheepdog, one of the top Old English people in the country. This is Beautiful, the top though. young dogs. Look, look, look. 
Everything's a surprise. Here. You heard Don say to her a little bit earlier, proper speed. These dogs move, they have a shuffling gait like a bear. They have to be moved at the proper speed to, to show that properly. The pulley is probably an ancient breed coming to Hungary from the east 10 centuries ago. A possible place of origin could be Tibet, although that is not certain. He has the same kind of quartered coat seen in the Commodore. The pulley is adept at handling herds and flocks. He's also been used as a hunting dog. This is truly a rugged individualist. He is athletic, intelligent, alert, and what fancy is referred to as elastic. He's naturally very loyal to his master and family, and he can be manipulative. The plural of pulley is pulik. This is pulley number five. This is the cousin of our buddy, the Commodore, Yeah, I was going to say, looks like a Commodore after taxes. <laughs> Smaller and black. You know, they tell me that sheep take their direction best from dark dogs. This is Matilda. And around, please. Yeah, uh, that graphic, best in show. We'll have it, and it's going to be exciting. I tell you, well, you're going to have a chance to see it. That's all I can say. The Shetland Sheepdog is a collie in miniature with some other changes as well besides size. He is a native of the Shetland Islands. The habitat in the Shetland Islands is limited, rugged, and in some people's estimation, hostile. The ponies, cattle, and dogs that come from there are rugged as well and small enough to be accommodated by what the islands have to offer. The Sheltie is a companion dog, friendly, gay, and very talkative. This is Shetland Sheepdog number 11. We had a Sheltie last year that showed so well in the best in show. He won this group, got a lot of attention. This is Bridget, the owner handler, Karen Dickinson from Squim, Thank Washington. You. Go right around. Dr. Dubler, who is the going to judge best in show, is already here. And now all the dogs she'll see will be surprises. She'll make the decision, but you're going to have a chance. We'll tell you more about it later. This is the car Corgi with the tail. In Welsh, corgi means dog. The cardigan, named for Cardiganshire in Wales, is one of the oldest breeds in the British Isles. He was a house guard and companion through most of his career, but that was secondary work. Its principal task is to drive cattle. He is a tireless worker. As late as the middle 1800s, the cardigan and Pembroke Welsh corgis were interbred, but that is not done today. The corgis are friendly companion dogs in every setting. This is the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, number 12. Here's Abby with handler Jane Myers. We saw Greg earlier, and there's Steve Donaldson, one of the co-owners. This is great. Jane, of course, is a professional handler, so I'm sure she makes, some, makes a fee for boarding a dog, but it says here that Abby and Jane love to eat lobster together. Well, yeah, I had to buy lobster for your dog. <laughs> And this is the corgi without a tail. It's from Pembrokeshire and traces back to the 12th century. The Pembroke, you will note, is shorter than the cardigan in body length. Its legs are straighter and the coat is finer. The cardigan's ears are rounded, the Pembroke's are pointed, and then, of course, there is the tail. The corgis are growing in popularity, and one does feel this is a breed whose time as a top companion dog has yet to come in this country. This is Pembroke Welsh Corgi, number 11. Halfway down and back. Small dog. We don't want him to oh, wear no. himself out. No, we down. don't want him to be on empty. Because <laughs> those little legs will pump. Look at this. They'll pump as hard as they can. And, and looking around, is it to say, I'm really beautiful, aren't I? And look at that. Oh, the back of it, man. Just going from side to side. Love it. And around. And around. Forrest Gump. Ah, me. Well, I'm going to say it one more. Well, I'll say it a couple more times. Best in show, what we're working towards. We'll be right back. This little girl is 16 days old, but she has actually been getting pedigree puppy for more than nine weeks already. Dr. Fran Smith, veterinarian and tough breeder. That's because their mother was fed pedigree puppy throughout her entire pregnancy. Once the puppies are done weaning, they start on their own pedigree puppy system. It has all five building blocks of good nutrition. I wouldn't feed my puppies anything except pedigree puppy food. Develop with the vets at the Waltham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. I see a bug. 
Here's our idea, show us what's new in computer technology. We're gathered here in Las Vegas to look at about 10,000 new products representing over 2,300 companies. This is running off the K6, right? AT type form factor chassis. K6 with a 3D accelerator. How many makers are these guys? They're pretty sharp, you know all this stuff. Many of these products have never been seen before. If you want to program on the fly, this right. is really cool. Showing the next generation of computers to the next generation. Best Buy. Now that's a great idea. Oh, yeah. In these eyes, you see my wife. You see my children. And I fear I shall never see them again. Moby Dick. Premiering March 15th at 8 on USA. Empire State Building, you recognize that, and here it is, Madison Square Garden, and we're getting ready for best in show. Everybody's anxious, David. Everybody is. You just heard the voice of Joe Dubler probably being mic'd back there, getting ready to go for her assignment. But here's Don Jones working his way down the line. Again, collecting in his mind the things that he saw and felt as he examined them. I think we're going to come down to the long and the short of it in this group, Joe. I think it's going to be between the German Shepherd and the, uh, and the Corgi, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. There's the Shepherd. Beautiful German Shepherd handled by Jimmy Moses. Jimmy's been best in show here before. Got to take this step before we go Here Don's going down the line picking out the dogs that he wants to work from. Got the Bearded Collie. Shepherd. The Bouvier. The, the Collie, the rough Collie. Good time seeing him here. There's the Shepherd behind the Collie, the Old English. There comes a little Thank forest you, back to bring up the rear. Step back for the moment. <clears throat> By yourself, now go right making, around. Making some right room for the end. dogs to go around and show off what they've got. There's the there's the bearded collie. First dog out. It's a sooner. There goes the Belgian sheep dog. The Bouvier de Flandre. The Briard. The Rough Collie. You hear the, dog, the crowd's reaction, the German Shepherd, Leroy Brown. The old English Sheepdog shuffles his way around the ring. And Forrest Gump, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. John's probably got a pretty good idea what he's going to do here. He's just sort of looking at some final details. Well, now you pick the shepherd. I'm going to pick Lassie. Seems to be walking right by my shepherd. And he goes to the old English the top, the, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is at the end of the line. Moves up a little bit. Got the shepherd in second for the moment. The Belgian Sheepdog, here's the Corgi, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. I don't know what he's got in mind here. He's putting the Corgi up into third. I think he's done, Joe. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And here we go. That's it. Oh, he's stopping them. Let's see if he's going to rearrange something or if he's going to just wait and point. He's One, pointing. two, the yep. yep. old English sheepdog four. with Jerry Martyr. She's been here before. She won this group about eight years ago with the old English that was born in the drive through line at a fast food restaurant. Oh, she could hardly believe it, David. Oh, she's excited, I know. Yeah. One of my favorite people. She's from Chicago. Well, we're working towards best in show. Every piece is going into place, and you're going to get a chance to meet the best in show judge. There you see her getting ready. So stay with us. You come back. We're going to be here. Here's a different way to get your dog to clean his teeth. Pedigree Dentabone. 
Its unique shape and texture has been clinically proven to reduce plaque and tartar buildup and to freshen your dog's breath. Pedigree Dentabone. Developed with vets. Recommended by top breeders. Every week, movie patrons eat millions of pounds of snacks, and nobody brings a toothbrush. Chew on this. Chewing Trident after snacks can help prevent cavities from forming. Where's mine? So when you can't brush, chew on this. Trident. My grandson's a cute kid, but one tough businessman. Hey, buddy, I must have fixed my car. Up from pricing? What do you think this is, mister? That new GM Goodrich Service Plus? What a kid. Got upfront pricing, plus lifetime guarantee on parts and labor, plus courtesy transportation. New GM Goodrich Service Plus. The little guy was right. The plus means better. <laughs> Call for the select GM dealer near you. This little girl is 16 days old, but she has actually been getting pedigree puppy for more than nine weeks already. Dr. Fran Smith, veterinarian and tough breeder. That's because their mother was fed pedigree puppy throughout her entire pregnancy. Once the puppies are done weaning, they start on their own pedigree puppy food. It has all five building blocks of good nutrition. I wouldn't feed my puppies anything except pedigree puppy food. Developed with the vets at the Walsham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. Rebecca de Mornay. You're really good with mechanical things. William H. Macy. What do you want with me? She's taking him for a ride. The Con. Premiering Wednesday, March 4th on USA. There aren't too many second chances in life. So HBO's bringing you Second Chance Tuesday. Because how often do you get another shot at something you missed? Like this. Or this. Or even this. Every Saturday on HBO, you're guaranteed a new movie. What you might not know is that you get another crack at it Tuesday night. If you miss Saturday Night Guarantee, you need Second Chance Tuesday. Your search for great movies has ended. The channel with the biggest blockbuster titles, uncut and commercial free, is Stars. Movies too big to miss. I promise I'll never leave you. Where Hollywood's brightest stars shine. If you don't get stars, you're not getting the best movies. Call your programming provider for stars. What a movie channel should be. <laughs> you talk about excitement. Now, what, what's, what's the handler? The dog reacted before the handler did. <laughs> Lamb Love's Desert Dancer joins our other six winners in the Best in Show lineup here in a few minutes. My pick, the German Shepherd, went second. Pembroke Welsh Corgi went third. The Belgian Sheepdog went fourth. You ask anyone involved in the world of purebred dogs, and they'll tell you that being asked to judge the Best in Show at Westminster is the highest honor a person can receive. And this year's honoree has been associated with dogs for more than 50 years. And this distinction truly marks the pinnacle of her long and distinguished career. And David Fry has much, much more. On the judge information form next to occupation, Dr. Josephine Dubler has written retired, but you'd never know it. At 80 years old, Dr. Dubler, or Joe as she prefers to be called, still heads to her office every day at the University of Pennsylvania Veterinary School and still heads out on the road many weekends to dog shows all over the country. On this particular weekend, she's come to New York to judge best in show at Westminster. Whatever honors I've had, this has to be the greatest. And hers has been a lifetime filled with accolades. Hearing impaired since birth, Josephine was raised on a farm in Pennsylvania horse country. Because of the hearing problem, I got along with the animals better than I got along with people. Gee, before I could walk, I had Airedale puppies for a friend. Farm life, as well as a father, an uncle, a brother, and two cousins who were veterinarians, made her choice of professions an easy one. In 1938, she became the first female graduate from the University of Pennsylvania School of Veterinary Medicine. I keep thinking that if I'd have been able to hear everything that had been said, I probably wouldn't have made it through. I'm told that very nasty things were said. Women don't belong in this profession. They should be home. 
raising children. People would say, I hope you didn't get upset by all of that talk. Well, I didn't get upset because I didn't hear it, so I managed. I think it's astonishing that she managed to get through the veterinary school at that time when I'm sure there were very few concessions to women made uh, during her whole education that she succeeded. Not only as the first woman, but somebody who had a hearing impairment. Uh, so I, I mean, Josephine, I think, is a, an amazing lady. Dr. Dubler now serves as a special assistant to Dean Kelly after 38 years on the faculty at Penn. In the 1940s, not long before she started at the university, Dr. Dubler began to show Dandy Dinmont Terriers after receiving one as a gift. In the early 1960s, she began a long career as a judge. But her greatest gift to both the world of purebred dogs and the world of veterinary academia is the way she has served as a link between the two. For many years, Dr. Dubler wrote a column for Popular Dogs magazine, and she established Penn's annual canine symposium for breeders and owners, now in its 28th year. In addition, her contributions to companion animals have been recognized by her alma mater with the naming of the Dr. Josephine Dubler Genetic Disease Testing Laboratory. But nothing truly matches the thrill she got when she received her first phone call about being named Best in Show Judge for Westminster. I couldn't believe it when Mr. Collier called. Why me? Well, I think it's a continuation of, of uh, Dr. Dubler's life as a pioneer. That here she was the, the first woman graduating from the school, and now she's the first veterinarian to be the best in show judge at Westminster in the later part of her career. People keep asking me, how am I going to make up my mind? But in the end, it's up to the dogs. What a great lady. She says, no pressure. All the dogs, the seven dogs that have made it to the finals will be great dogs. It's up to them. And that's what we're going for. The best in show. Now, tonight, you're going to have a chance to test your judging skills against Dr. Dubler, the best in show judge. Now, only Dr. Dubler decides which of the seven group winners will be the best in show at this year's Westminster. But we wanted to give you a chance, the viewers at home, a chance to voice your opinion. So between now and the end of the best in show judging, visit USA's website, cast your selection for best in show. And after Dr. Dubler reveals her choice, the official choice, we'll show you the dog the viewers at home favored. So log on to www.usanetwork.com slash vote slash. Remember, Best in Show is coming up, and you got a chance to be a part of it. Have some fun with it. We'll be right back. In my family, as every family, there were brands that we grew up with, and my family, for all of time, has fed pedigree foods. Dr. Fran Smith, veterinarian and tough breeder. As long as you're feeding pedigree, whether it's dry or canned, whether it's puppy or mealtime, you're feeding the best. The whole pedigree product line is the perfect food for your dogs. Vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, carbohydrates, fiber, and perfect protein. The nutrition present in Pedigree cannot be beat. Develop with the vets at the Waltham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. <laughs> Would you rather have something under the hood than on it? This is the supercharged Bonneville. <laughs> one of the world's most powerful sports sedans. Inside and out. It's time for additional luxury. That's the collected from dust. Luxury with attitude. The Bonneville by Pioneer. Somewhere there's a job where you can take time off for a cold. Where someone will cover for you when you can't stop coughing. But until you find that job, there's Hall's Mentholiptus. Hall's Vapor Action goes right to work, soothing your throat, calming your cough. No one has time to be sick, but Hall's will keep you going when you are. Hall's, we're going to work. You know, meat's a dog's natural food. And when was the last time you saw a dog grazing in a field? Dr. John Hamill, veterinarian and top breeder. Meat's what they love. So that's why I feed mine pedigree the number one meat dog food in America. It's 100% complete and balanced and a great source of quality protein. My dogs love it. I couldn't see myself feeding my dogs anything else. Developed with the vets at the Waltham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders.
From the USA Friday Night Film Ball, the coming attractions, this Friday, February 20th. These animals are huge. These big bugs will rock your world. We have got to get out. Kevin Bacon, Tremors. Friday, February 27th, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman in an American epic. I always said I'd get my land. Far and away, Friday nights, watch the stars come out. The USA Friday Night Film Ball, the cure for the common show. How do you work up a sweat? Sunday Night Heat on USA. There you go, Joe. The Terriers have been the NFC, have been to the Westminster Kennel Club. What the NFC has been to the Super Bowl the last few years, 41 best in show wins here at Westminster over the years. Sporting groups right in there too, but bringing up the rear, the herding group with just one. Of course, they've only been in existence since 1983. Three hounds, let's see what happens tonight. Remember last year, our judge, Mrs. Dorothy Collier, points to the standard schnauzer with the handler Doug Holloway, Gabriella Del Toro from Milano. <laughs> Very excited, cheering in Italian. There's Pa. So you can stuff. cheer in all kinds of languages because 2,500 dogs and you walk out best in show. Well, Roger Karras will start it for us. This is the exciting time. Madison Square Garden, best in show, and now they're going to come out, and you'll hear the crowd react. This is a time, Joe, where the crowd can really take a dog to a, to a higher level. These handlers know it. They'll play their dogs to the crowd, try and get some help. Here come the seven. The Alaskan Malamute, the Gordon Setter, the Standard Poodle. There's the Alaskan Malamute, Tyler. My pick, Joe. Your pick, upset. Taking Tyler all the way. Here's Kirby, the Gordon Center, winner of the sporting group. A heartbeat away from going best in show last year, according to the best in show judge last year. The hot, new, young, standard poodle, Trace, the old English sheepdog, Yoshi. And here comes Dr. Dubler out. Here's the toy poodle. So there's Dr. Josephine Dubler. You say all you want. Special woman, special dog person. Let's just sum it all up by saying she is a very special person. There's the favorite. The Norwich Terrier, a big favorite. Easy dog to pick as a favorite. Number one dog by a huge margin last year. Beautiful dog, handled by the incomparable Peter Green. There's the long-haired dachshund winner of the Hound Group. Dr. Dubler, there she's taking a look at the Norwich Terrier with Peter Green. Dr. Dubler's background is in Terriers. She's chairman of the, of the Montgomery County Terrier Club. And it's great dog show experience. She said that she wishes in this assignment that she can find a well, completely be... new, completely wonderful dog that she's never seen before. I don't know how many of these dogs she's seen. I don't know if anybody falls into that category. But we'll see. She's got to judge on the moment, and whoever gives her the best show is going to be pointed at. All right, here we go. She's taking a look at her first dog, the Alaskan Malamute. I'm, I'm all over this dog, Joe. Yes, you are. A great young dog. He was the number two dog in the country. Never set a paw on an airplane last year. Unheard of. Virtually unheard of for a top ten dog. Love the handler, owner handler, Sandy D'Andrea. There's Dr. Bill Newman, the co one of the co-owners, along with Kathy Luer. What does it tell Can you, you when a dog down and back, doesn't... Please? There's Dr. Dubler. What does it tell you when a dog hasn't been on a plane and has that kind of poise? Well, it tells you that the handler loves to drive. 
They probably live in the Northeast, and they can get to a lot of dog shows by driving. Living like a place in Seattle, you've got to get on an airplane every once in a while if you want to put that kind of a record on a dog. Sandy D'Andrea, the handler here, breeder owner handler. Haven't had a breeder owner handler win Best in Show at Westminster since 1983. Chris Terrell won with the great Afghan hound. Kabix the challenger. Before that, 1969, Walter Goodman was the last breeder owner handler to go best in show. Here's the Gordon setter. You heard Dottie Collier tell us last year this dog was her second choice for best in show if she had a second place ribbon. Well, they don't. It's all or nothing. And Kirby's back to take another shot at it. Ken Murray, the expert handler of this dog. Dr. Dubler, going over them, putting her yes, hands she on she is. It. We like to say those hands send a message to your brain. And don't forget, you at home, vote for best in okay, show. See how you do. WWW, you saw it begins. And that was Dr. Dubler's voice you heard. Judy Brown, Susan Lybrand, and Peggy Nowak are co-owners of Kirby. There's Judy Brown. Judy, clap. <laughs> Get excited. Here we go. Listen to the crowd. They love this dog last year, and they're a hot form again this year. A wonderful animal. Beautifully handled by Kenny. The crowd's into it, too. We can't hear you clapping at home, but get on that website. Just hope they're voting. I tell you, the crowd is really getting into it, boys. They, they know why they came here tonight. This is for best in show. This is what it's all about. All of the people in the dog world would give anything to be out there. Those of you at home, we hope you're picking your favorites, too. Oh, standard poodle. Watch the reaction to this one. The hardest working man in the dog business, Dennis McCoy. Beautiful young standard poodle, Trayson. Two and a half year old male. Champion Lake Cove, that's my boy. Just started showing him in April. And Dennis went best in show here with a white standard poodle in 1991. The great Peter Whisperwind on a carousel. Look at that look, Joe. He winked at you. <laughs> I tell you, he's cool. He's cool. Trey is cool. Dog is coned by Mrs. Alan Robeson. Mrs. Robeson, there you are. She's been here before, haven't you? <laughs> She's checking herself oh, out, too. One of the great dog ladies. She's been best in show here with the great pointer a few years ago, 1986, I believe. There goes Dennis and her dog, Trey. Dennis has also had a Dalmatian in the final seven for Mrs. Robeson. There's a formula there. Is this going to be the year that it works? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Nice young dog, Trey. Bit of a surprise winner to a certain point in the group last night. But of course, old Uncle Dave picked him. <laughs> oh, this one will get some reaction. <laughs> the sheepdog. Oh, man, look at this. Yoshi. Now, here's another breeder owner handler, Joe. Now, to do a count here, it looks like we've got about two breeder owner handlers. Both of the ladies. <laughs> Dr. Duber really checking them out. Well, there's a lot of dog under there. She was burned down on her outfit, didn't want any glitter to clash with the uh, green carpet here at Madison Square Garden. She was very specific in how she was going to dress. Nothing by chance with her. Well, she looks fabulous. Still going to the office every day at 80. You want to go down and back, please? And she's enjoying it. Very active in the veterinary school, the University of Pennsylvania, yes. She is enjoying it. She said this is the thrill of her lifetime, and for a woman of her accomplishments, that says a lot. There you go, ringside for the 
old English Sheepdog Champion Lamb Love Desert Dancer Yoshi, owned by Jerry Martyr and Kiko Lascelles. Jerry won the group here in the garden at 91. Oh, Just crazy. missed going best in show. Maybe there's a story here. That dog goes from side to side. Look at it. Like a, a rotating body. They're a very square dog, and their gait, they're supposed to shuffle like a bear. Well, they, that one did. <laughs> That's quite a team, Jerry and Yoshi, both very excitable. The toy poodle, I talked to Frank Sabella, who put this dog up in the toy group last night, and, and he just was virtually speechless. And with Frank, that's Thank hard you. to believe, because <laughs> he loves to tell you about the great dogs coming up, and he, got, he is very excited about this dog, Giko. Japanese and American champion, Dignity of Jewelry House Yoko. Going back to Japan after the show. Owned by Yoko Kamiya. And there she is, handled by the incomparable Kaz Hazaka. A deep Green sigh dog. of excitement. Here's Kaz, the handler. Takes him out very carefully. Don't touch any of that hair. <laughs> A fabulous young dog. Four-year-old, four-year-old male toy poodle, Giko. Performing, really performing now. Really performing. Part of the deal, you play to the crowd here a little bit, get them on your side. Cause interned and studied and learned under the great dog person, Annie Back. Clark. Thank you. Here we go. Look around, please. Okay. Look around, please. There goes Geeko around the ring. go. The toy dog. The final dog in the lineup now. She's turning to the Norwich Terrier. Do we save the best for last? That's the favorite. The heavy favorite. Everybody was talking Everybody, about it. Everybody except one guy I know is picking this dog. You picked the Malamute. I picked the Malamute. I want to stay on the breeder owner handler. This dog's got everything going for it, Joe. Top dog all breeds last year by a long way. Handled by the incomparable Peter Green. One of just a handful of people who have won Best in Show here at Westminster three times. Owned by some great dog people, great no. friends of mine, Glorvina and Sandy Schwartz. I haven't picked a winner all night, but I'm going to go with the favorite. <laughs> There's Glorvina. Glorvina was in Afghan Hounds for years, had the top dog all breeds with an Afghan Hound. She told me once, she originally started in Pugs. She told me she switched from Pugs to Afghans because you heard that people, as they get older, they start to look like their dogs. Oh. Now she's switching to Norwich Terriers. I don't know if I'm going to believe her. You telling me I look like a Chinese crested? <laughs> well, I don't know, Joe. <laughs> get that makeup girl up here again. <laughs> There's Lotus Cotton, who's the breeder of champion Fairwood Frolic. Rocky is her call name. He's going all out. And we do have one more dog left, Joe. How can I leave out the dog from my own group, the Hound Group? But we'll see him in a minute. There's Rocky. Roger Karras rejoining us here on the floor. Here's the long-haired dachshund. Look at that. Carlos Puig setting that dog up beautifully. Curmudgeon, Uncle Ben, champion Kermada's Curmudgeon. Named Curmudgeon because he wouldn't play with his siblings when he was a puppy, Joe. Imagine saying he's waited 23 years for this night, the handler. Here are the owners. Doctors Mark and Patrice Parker, who went second in the in the terrier group last night with their dandy, won the hound group with their long-haired dachshund. Let's see what happens. Can only do one thing better than win the group. Go down and back, please. Down black, down back, please. Says Josie, as we all call her in the dog world. Kind of a tough call. Kind of uh, a tough call 
among the crowd, don't you think? Listen to him. But Carlos working it. Here we go, Joe and Joe. Joe and Josephine. Uh-oh. Here we go. She's taking her look. Set her hands on all of them. Watch them all go around. Remember, this is for best in show. 2,500 dogs started. We're down to one. There's Tyler, the Malamute, with Bill Newman, the co-owner, with the hammer, Sandy D'Andrea, from Lockport, New York. The team moves down to the Gordon Center. Champion, bit of gold, Titan treasure, Kirby. Nearly went best in show last year. Can he make it happen this year? The hot young standard poodle. I think we'll see that dog in this group again, Joe, in the best of show lineup. I don't think this is his year. We'll see if Joe, Josephine, has found a completely new, completely wonderful dog. The old English sheep dog. The toy poodle. Let's not discount the toy poodle. No, not at all. It's a great dog. Look at it. How about it? Well, the Norwich Terrier with Peter Green. The bump here with the long hair Dachshund. It's all in her hands. She's looking over here at us, Joe. <laughs> we can help you. She doesn't need our help. Taking a long look down the line now. Impressive lineup. Well, I went with the Terrier. How you doing at home? Who you picking? Staying on the Malamute. The Malamute was number two dog all breeds last year. The Norwich was number one all breeds. There's Tyler. Looking right at you. Josephine. Collecting her thoughts. And uh -oh. she's made up her mind. We always go nuts at this point. Who's the last dog she looked at? Does that mean that's the one she's taking? That's how you get to vote at home. Dr. Newberg made her choice. Awful quiet. What's going on? What do you like, Joe? You're staying on the Norch. I'm staying on the Terrier. Can't sway, can't you bring you over to the to the Malamute? No, no. I'm staying with the Terrier. I'm All right. going with the favorite. I haven't picked anybody all night. <laughs> I'm going to go home a winner. Well, I was a little bit lucky at this point. Let's see what happens. Seven great dogs. She gave us no indication she was considering making it between. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll pull out one or two at the end and kind of play with them, but... Mm -hmm. She'd be a great poker player, boy. She hadn't tipped <laughs> her hand at all. There's the long-haired Dachshund with Carlos. Uh oh listen to Gordon with Kirby. Listen to the crowd. Let's we'll see what we'll Take the Norch Terrier. <laughs> Terry. All right. Excellent. Very hard to do a straight line. Lucky. Champion Fairwood Frolic. Very good. She is a great Stay right here. Stay right here. Did you recognize me? <laughs> <laughs> As Dr. Duper, you're listening to it, you heard her say it was very hard to choose, very hard to choose. And that has to be the understatement of the century. She's made up, she looks great. And she even said to Peter Green, did you recognize her? There's Gorvina Schwartz getting congratulations. Well, the Terrier, the Norwich Terrier, there's the trophy. You saw the owners, there's the champion, best in show. We're going to be back for a visit. There are the owners. And there's the reaction. We'll be back in a minute. 
USA Network proudly presents Death to Moby Dick. The epic tale of a crazed beast and the whale who haunted him. Patrick Stewart, Gregory Peck. I stab at thee! Moby Dick. Presented by AT&T. Premiering March 15th at 8 on USA. All my life I can remember dogs in the household. My mom was a breeder and I'm definitely following in my mom's footsteps. Becoming a veterinarian seemed like a natural thing to do. The dogs are not only my profession, they're also my passions. My dogs are fed pedigree little champions because it was designed for small dogs. When you open a can of pedigree little champions, you can see the quality, you can smell it too. It's very reassuring that the beef in little champions has gone through the USDA inspection process. I'm hooked on dogs, I'm a dogaholic. Develop with the vets at the Walsham Center. Pedigree, recommended by top breeders. Car and Driver rank the Intrigue number one over Camry LE V6 and Taurus LX. And Automobile Magazine calls it an E-Class Mercedes you can buy for under 21.5. Only when you test drive the Intrigue will all its secrets be revealed. Intrigue by Oldsmobile, a sophisticated twist on a sports sedan. Now receive 1.9% APR financing on the Intrigue and the entire line of Oldsmobiles. You can visibly reduce the signs of aging on your hands with Neutrogena New Hands. The Pro-Retinol formula diminishes fine lines, reduces the look of age spots, restores a more youthful tone. Reveal younger looking hands with Neutrogena New Hands. You can feel it start. There is the winner, the Norwich Terrier, best in show. And getting ready for the presentation. Uh, happy dog, happy owners. And you people at home, you had a chance. Did you agree with Dr. Duper? Well, the Malamute, 36%. I have to say, you did not agree. The Norwich Terrier, the actually the winner here, best in show, 17%. So that gives you a pretty good idea, but it was fun, wasn't it? And I tell you, a lot of excitement still here. And David Fry is with the winner. Let's go to David. Hey, I'm down here with Peter Green. Winning your fourth best in show with a great dog. A lot of pressure being the number one dog in the country by a long ways. Everybody talked about you winning. How did that affect you coming in? Well, <clears throat> David, I try to keep calm. I figured it'd either happen or it won't, so I figured I've been here enough times to know if you keep calm, the dog acts good. It's got to make you crazy, though, when all you come in here all week long and all you hear is, well, we know you're going to win, we know you're going to win. Yeah, everybody keeps saying you're going to win, and, you know, it's, it's just as easy to lose. There were some good dogs there tonight, and if she didn't perform, I figured I was in trouble. Well, you've been in here three other times. This is your fourth. That kind of puts you in a class all by yourself. Well, How's this dog compared to some of your other great dogs? Oh, they're all, you know, David, each one, when you had them, they were brilliant dogs in their day. And she's brilliant. She has wonderful star qualities about her, and I, I just love her to death. She, did, you ha did you have a feel for what was going on in Best in Show Ring? Was yeah, she on? I watching. You... I, yeah, she was on. I was just, you have to watch. She doesn't go overboard, you know? And, and uh, she can get very carried away and then start this barking that she doesn't get, and then she makes a mess of herself. So you've got to keep her on the edge, and if she goes too much, you're, you're in trouble. But she was just right. She just, one time I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose her here. But most of the time she was, she was good. She'd walk brilliant and pose brilliant at the right time. I kept watching the judge and, and uh, just trying to make her do it at the right time. So. Well, the great handler can make a great dog look even better. You also have some great owners on this dog, Glorvina oh, yeah. and Sandy Schwartz. They're old timers. They've been around a long, long time. <laughs> Did a lot of winning in, in Afghans, as you know, went to your breed, and uh, then decided they better go in for little dogs. They're getting a little age on them, <laughs> like us all. Don't have to run quite so fast. Well, right. Peter Green, Joe Dubler, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for you both, and uh, we appreciate your time. Way to go, Rocky. And uh, Joe, back up to you. Okay, David. Some great things were said there. You had to keep him calm. Thought he lost it for a while, but he didn't. And you're looking at best in show. We'll be back with some closing comments right after this. Say Sports special presentation of the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is brought to you by Pedigree Food for Dogs. Developed with vets. Recommended by top breeders. You're looking at the best in show. The champion is always, uh, there are always people around when you win. David, you have any closing comments? I do, Joe. We've been talking all night about the only surprise at Westminster would be if there were no surprises. This isn't a surprise. A great show dog, top dog, all breeds last year by a long way, handled by the incomparable Peter Green. A terrier in a show dominated by terriers. What can I tell you? No surprises here. Rocky, the champion. Best in show at Westminster. Joe? 
Okay, David. Well, Rocky is just looking around saying, well, hey, I thought all along I was the champion. I don't know why you guys are so excited. But it was interesting to listen to his handler, Peter Green, say I almost lost him once. I had to keep him calm, otherwise he'd make a mess of himself. Well, Rocky, you didn't make a mess of yourself, and neither did any of the other 2,500. You're looking at some of them now as they parade around, and we hope you enjoyed it. We hope that you participated in our little website judging and had some fun with it. So, from Madison Square Garden in New York, for David Fry and Alex Wilson, this is Joe Garagiola saying, hey, thanks for watching. We enjoyed it, and I know you did, and you're looking at the best in show. This has been a special presentation from you.